Hi everyone, so I am headed into a Dollar General right now. They came out with a new cosmetic line called Believe Beauty, and these are supposed to be premium beauty products, everything under $5. And so when I came to Tennessee to visit family, I was like, I have to come and check it out. So we're gonna head in here right now and see if they have the beauty products, and if they do, I'm gonna pick them up and we are gonna test them out and see, are they premium, are they good? Because everything under $5? That's crazy. So we found the area. This is the Believe Beauty section. And it looks like they're also having a sale. So it's even lower price. I see, what are these eyeshadows? Oh, they have foundation. But there's not a whole lot of colors. They literally have like <laughs> two dark colors over here. They have concealer, blushes, a few brushes, tinted moisturizer. Look, they have a sponge. A little beauty sponge. There are these little glimmer pots, so I'm gonna get a few of these. They have this gold one that's really pretty down here, so we're gonna pick one of these up. Oh, they also have lipsticks. And they have liquid lipsticks too. Let's look at the nudes, I always go for the nudes. This is the light medium and the medium tan. I'm not gonna get them both because they literally look about the same. Maybe one shade darker. So I'm just gonna get the darker one, but they look so similar. So these are the bronzers, and I don't know if they're in order of how dark they are, but, but they don't look very dark. All right, so we got the makeup. We spent $148, which let's be real is like three things at Sephora, and we got almost one of everything in the line. So let's go home and test it out. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is your girl, Amanda Ensing, and today we are back with another first impression review beauty video. Are we excited? If you follow me on Instagram, then you would know that I was in Tennessee last week. And if you're not following me on Instagram, we can't be friends. I was visiting family last week, and while I was in Tennessee, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to Dollar General. Growing up, I always went to Dollar General just for food, for random stuff. It's just a thing in the South. Dollar General, not to be confused with Dollar Store, Dollar Tree, all of those other dollar stores. We do have all of those in Tennessee as well, but Dollar General launched a brand new beauty line exclusively at Dollar General, and it is called Believe Beauty. The thing that intrigued me about Believe Beauty, number one is the price point. Everything is under $5 and there are, I think, 150 different products that I read online. I did a little bit of research before I went into the store to look for it. Not only is everything under $5, but it's also cruelty-free and they claim to be a premium cosmetic brand. I've laid out everything here on my makeup desk and I'm going to read to you as I try out the products where they are made because I think that's really cool to note. When I was looking through all of them, they're all made in a lot of different places and I thought that was very interesting. I spent $150, which yes, that is a lot of money, but I got a lot of product. I got like 34, 35 products. I just count them really quickly so I could be wrong, but that's a lot of makeup and some of the items were half off. So everything is under $5. A lot of the items that were 450 were half off. Let's just get right into it and see if this brand is good or not. I'm gonna start with my skin. So I actually picked up two different primers. I just kind of wanted to feel the consistency and then pick which one I'm gonna use, but they have the Pretty and Primed Stay Put Makeup Primer and then the Hydrating Primer. And they are both made in the USA, which is really cool. So let's open up the Stay Put Primer first. So am I the only one that smells all my makeup? It has a light fragrance, but I think it's just like the actual product. So this is this primer. And then the hydrating primer, I'm gonna feel that on my other hand. This one is blue. I'll probably end up using the hydrating one. This one as well does not have a scent. Let's try the hydrating primer because I am normal to dry. I'm gonna take this much and I'm just going to put this on the skin. It's very thin in consistency. I didn't feel much of a difference between the two to be honest with you. Maybe they have different benefits if you use them with foundation, but I just feel like the Stay Put would have had like a tacky finish or something to grab your makeup. I picked up all the brushes. They only had four at the store. I don't know if there's more, but this one only had four. So I picked up the foundation brush, the all over eyeshadow brush, a blending eyeshadow brush, and a powder brush. All of the brushes are made in China. There's glue on the back of this. I don't know if this is supposed to make it like stay to the little cardboard thing in here, but some of my brush hairs got caught in it. So I picked up the Skin Finish Foundation. It just says, that's it, there doesn't say anything. I'm so used to other brands, especially high-end brands, just talking about what their foundation does and the foundation has like 30 names to it and acclaims, but this is simple. This is just like foundation, it is what it is, and this is a Skin Finish Foundation. Medium to full coverage, it says at the bottom. All right, so we have a pump, yay, I'm so glad. Okay, 
So I'm just gonna pump this on to the brush and I got the shade Neutral Tan. To be honest, there was like one or two deep colors and they weren't that deep. It smells like foundation. It doesn't have a super strong smell. And ooh, go me, this color is gonna work. Yes, I picked the right color. Okay, the coverage is pretty good. I feel like this brush is stiff, but it needs to be like a little bit wider. Like it's kind of making like this shape versus like a circle. Okay, I'm just gonna do half of my face with the brush because I also picked up their sponge, but the foundation actually looks nice. I also picked up their beauty sponge and it looks like this. I'm gonna go wet it. Yeah, it says use sponge damp for buildable coverage or dry for full coverage. It says you can use it dry as well. Feels soft though. I'm gonna go rinse it under the sink and let's see how it feels afterwards. <laughs> you guys, this is massive. Like, you know how sponges expand, like beauty blenders expand, but this is huge. Like, I swear it was like this big. And now look at how huge this is. It's like the size of my face. Oh my gosh, why is it so big? Okay, I'm gonna take this much and I'm going, like, it's just so huge. I feel like I'm like smacking myself in the face right now. Doesn't look terrible, but I do feel like it sheared out the foundation a little bit like more than another sponge would. Oh, it looks so dirty. It's just hard, like, how would you do your concealer with this? I mean, I guess we'll find out if I use it, but this thing is massive. This would be a good body blender, like for leg makeup or body glow because it is so huge. But for the face, I mean, I don't think so. Next I have the Brighten Up Color Correcting Concealer and I got the shade Light Medium. I also picked up two of their regular concealers, but I'm gonna use the Color Corrector first. I thought it was really cool they had a Color Corrector because I don't think there are any Color Correctors under five bucks, that's pretty awesome. This is made in Poland. There are like little bubbles on top. Like I think it's maybe condensation, I hope. I don't know, but there are like little, it looks like moisture dots. I don't know if I should be alarmed or not. I mean, I've literally seen these like on MAC lipsticks before. A little suspect, but we're gonna try it. All right, so I'm gonna take this underneath of the eyes where I have darkness. I used to use the Becca one religiously. I think they need one even lighter than this, to be honest with you. This is light medium. I didn't see a lighter one at the store. I don't remember seeing one, but it did cover up the darkness pretty well. All right. Wow. Now we're gonna try the concealer. This is the Your Covered Liquid Concealer. I got the shade Light Beige and Ivory. So this is light beige. I thought it might be a little too dark and then Ivory is probably a little too light. So I'm gonna try to mix them. The concealers are made in Germany. And this is the wand, the little Dofa applicator and it like pointed. So I'm gonna take this underneath the eye. I feel like, ooh, I feel like it's drying really fast. Maybe I should do one eye at a time. Then I'm gonna take the lighter one. I'm gonna do a little bit on my eyelid as well. You know what? I did not see an eye primer at the store. That is one thing that I did not see that I'm actually kind of surprised now thinking about it. All right, I'm gonna take this massive sponge. Honestly, I feel like the sponge is just soaking up so much product. I'm gonna not use the sponge then. This sponge is just not it for me. I'm gonna add a little bit more concealer. It doesn't really smell like anything. All right, not bad. Can you guys notice the difference between this side and this side? This side looks way brighter to me, but honestly, the corrector is looking really good. It's not really creasing at all, which is amazing. I also picked up their translucent powder. They had a few different shades and I picked up the translucent one. The powder is made in Canada and this is what it looks like. It has a little sifter and you get four grams of powder. Almost doesn't smell like anything, but then it kind of does. I don't think there's a scent, but I don't hate it. All right, so I'm just going to dip in with my sponge. It's very thin, it's very finely milled. I really like the consistency. It feels like a professional baking powder. Dare I say, it reminds me of the Fenty powder. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dust off the excess powder. I don't like to bake for too long. Next, I'm gonna try the Brow Defining Pencil in Dark Brown, and this is made in Taiwan. And we also have a brow styling gel, also dark brown, also made in Taiwan. So let's start with the pencil. So it comes with a little spoolie. So I'm just gonna spoolie these little guys up. This is the pencil side. I'm honestly kind of scared because it kind of looks like a lip pencil. And I'm like, how pigmented is this gonna be? Oh, I barely like press it on my hand and it's really pigmented, so. <laughs> I'm kind of scared. I'm gonna use these micellar wipes I also bought from Believe Beauty just to take this off my hand. And I'll also keep you guys updated with these wipes because I'm gonna try them later to remove my makeup. These are made in Korea. Ooh, 
I love Korean skincare. I don't know what it smells like. It's kind of florally, but they're very like wet, which is a good thing. No one likes dry wipes. I'm gonna start in the front of my brows and I'm gonna try to go as light handed as I can. Okay, just kidding. I'm gonna start in the back then. It's like an eyeliner, which can be really scary because most brow pencils, you have to give some pressure so that you don't mess up, which is a good thing, but this is just so pigmented. I'm like, this is the rare case where pigmentation isn't always a good thing. I don't know if I'm feeling this at all. We'll just make the best of it. Like you can't be precise because it's so thick. Like, look at this. Oh, this comes with a small little applicator. I feel like it's really coating my brows, but it feels very thin, like the consistency. You can hear it. Let's move on to eyeshadow. Fingers crossed it goes better than the brow products. I picked up two things. First, I picked up one of the Glimmer Pots. This is a gel to powder eyeshadow in the shade Vintage, and this is made in Italy. So this is the packaging, and it has like this little ripple effect on the inside. I'll show you guys. This is what it looks like. Ooh, it is like a gel, it's like a cream. Let's swatch it on the back of my hand. It's very soft, almost like cold. And then this is what the color looks like. I also picked up one eyeshadow palette and this is in the color Nearly Nude and the eyeshadow palette is made in Taiwan. This is the eyeshadow palette that I picked. This was the prettiest one that I would use the most. It looks like there are two mattes and the rest are shimmer. To me, it looks like this is matte, this is matte, and the rest are all shimmery colors. Okay, there's some pigment there. Okay, they feel soft. That's a good thing. Let's swatch it on my hand. Wow, the champagne color is super pretty. This color swatched really well. There's not a transition color in here, so I'm gonna take one of the bronzers that I bought. This is Hawaiian Glow in the Tropics Bronzing Powder, and this is made in Taiwan as well. And to be honest with the bronzers, they were kind of weird to me. I feel like this is one of the darker ones, but it's not really that dark. Like, it kind of looks... Like compared to my skin, it doesn't really look like anything. Now I'm gonna use the blending brush first, but I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. The brushes are really hard to get out of the packaging because they are glued to this little cardboard. So I feel like you just have to cut them open. I'm gonna use this for my crease because it's kind of dense. I don't really like synthetic eye brushes unless it's a flat brush, like I do have a flat brush there, but I don't really like them to blend. I feel like natural hair feeling brushes, even if it's not natural hair, but ones that feel like natural hair are so much better and softer. So I'm gonna start with this brush and I'm going to take this bronzer and put it in my crease. Very powdery, as you can see. Now I'm gonna take the darker brown color, this one that's right here. I don't know why it looks like it's so much darker where I swatched, do you guys see that? Maybe there's just like an overspray, I don't know. But I'm gonna try this crease brush and uh, hopefully it doesn't look terrible. I feel like the handles should be longer. Like you can see a regular crease brush and this one because the further the brush is away from you, the more control you're gonna have. I mean, it's not doing a terrible job. I think it looks okay so far. These kind of brushes just drag on the eyes more. Like you can really feel them tug. This is the flat definer brush. Honestly, I feel like it's a little bit big. I'm gonna take a little bit more of my finger. I just love using my finger for lid colors that are metallic. I just feel like the warmth of your finger really heats up the product and you can add more. And then I just define it with a brush. I also picked up the liquid eyeliner. This is in the shade Midnight Jaguar and this is made in Germany and it looks like this. So I'm gonna try this as well. Don't know how much of this I can get on camera, but I really wanna see if this works. Let's try it on my hand first. Maybe that's better. Okay, she works. I mean, these wipes are like really good. Okay, this is kind of hard to get like a really defined wing because she's thick. Let me get really close to my mirror and I'll be right back. Okay, so as I was applying the liner, this one like isn't as bad. It wasn't as pigmented. Like it's almost looking like a gray black instead of a black. I also picked up one of their coal liners. This is the long lasting eyeliner in the shade Caviar. This is also made in Germany and it looks like this. I personally don't use twist up ones. I like the sharpenable coals, but let's see how dark it is and how black it is. So I'm gonna try to put this in my lower lash line. I also have contacts because my vision is really bad. So I'm interested to see how it wears throughout the day as well, having contacts, because there are only a few eyeliners that don't run on me, I feel like. All right, I mean, it's super pigmented. Darker than the liquid liner, that's for sure. I don't hate that. This actually feels really nice. I'm gonna take some of that eyeshadow on the lower lash line, that dark brown color. 
I picked up this blush bronzer highlight trio. This is the medium deep shade. And I think I showed a clip of it. I will play it here if I have it. The medium deep and the light medium. To be honest, they looked almost the exact same, which was uh, not okay. You hold it up to the lighter one, like they look very similar. This is made in Taiwan. Let's go ahead and try the bronzer first. I'm gonna take a contour brush and let's see if we can make some magic happen. It is super powdery. <laughs> I definitely would like to see some more shades. I'm gonna take that little flat brush and I'm gonna contour my nose. Oh, now it's looking really muddy. I don't know what happened right there, but I'm gonna take the powder brush and try to buff it. That got really muddy really fast. This is the blush in the palette. I also picked up a single blush. This is also made in Taiwan and it's in the color Fancy Plum. This is more of a berry shade. This is what that blush looks like. It's got a little bit of shimmer in it. And then the one that comes in the trio is more of a peachy color. I don't see any shimmer in the peachy one. So peachy and berry. I'm gonna try this one. I just wanted to buy a single blush just to test out how pigmented they were. And again, these are very powdery. It's a nice staple matte peachy shade. Picking a highlight is gonna be the hard part. I might mix a few. So we have one highlight that comes in here and then I also bought two single highlights. So the highlight that comes in the palette looks like this. Let's swatch it. It might be a little bit too dark to be honest, but it is pretty. I also bought Pink Pearls. This is also made in Taiwan and this is one of their individual highlights. I love highlighters so much. They're very powdery, like very powdery. So this is Pink Pearls right next to it. And then I also picked up one, and this is the lightest one I picked up in Rosy Glow. And this says Born to Blush. So this one is actually a blush. This is a highlight. This next one is technically a blush. I don't know how this is a blush. Ain't nobody gonna blush this color, okay? It has like almost a duochrome, iridescent, peachy champagne. I mean, you could use it as a blush topper maybe if you're fair, but these are the three colors. It's like lightest to darkest. Let's take pink pearls first. I'm gonna use this on my cheeks. Just wish they weren't so messy and powdery. Also, it's kind of weird. Like where I swatch, it just looks darker. Like, I don't know why it's doing that. I'm gonna pick up a ton of product. You guys know I like an intense highlight. Okay, it's not emphasizing pores, which is good. It is reflective. Okay, let's add some more. Very pretty. Let's do this one on the other side, the one that's supposed to be a blush, rosy glow. Let's take some of that. Oh my gosh, but as I use it, it's turning pink. What, is that supposed to happen? Look, it's like getting pink. Can you see that? I don't know, this could be bad, but let's see. Yeah, it's not as intense. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to the original one. I don't want my, like, my highlight to turn pink. If these had a little bit more pigment, I would be like so obsessed. And if they weren't so powdery, like look at how messy this is for me trying to use it. What do we think? Do we like, do we not like? Let me know down in the comments. I'm gonna go in with the one in the trio and let's apply it on the inner part of the eyes. This would have been way too dark on me as a highlight. It's okay. Maybe better as the lid color on me. Let's take some of the pink pearls and layer it. But it's weird because this is pink pearls, but this is not pink. This is a white gold color. I bought two mascaras. These mascaras are made in New York and New York, both made in New York. First, I have the high definition skinny mascara and it looks like this. Probably use this one for some lower lash action today. This is the Extend Lash Lengthening Mascara and it looks like this. Also could be good for some lower lash action. I'm very picky with lower lash mascara because they all run on me, I don't know why. That's why I only use the Rimmel one. It's like the only one that doesn't run down my face. The mascara is applying very naturally, but I really like the way it's making my lower lashes look. Last category is lips and finishing spray. So I bought quite a bit of lip products. I'm obsessed with lip products. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I love lip products, lip pencils, lipsticks, lip gloss, liquid lipsticks. I love everything to do with lips. So I picked up quite a few of them. So we're gonna start with a lip pencil. So these are long lasting lip liners. I got the shade Barely There and Almost Rose. And these are made in Germany. So I think I'm gonna use, let's swatch them on my hand. These are roll up pencils. They look so much darker on the little color than they do right here. I'm gonna try the darker one. The consistency is creamy. I just wish I would have gotten a different color, but I usually like like a MAC Soar kind of color or 
something more brown nude, like a darker brown. I didn't see any of those shades, but the formula is very creamy, so I'll give them that. I picked up an array of different products. I picked up lip gloss, liquid lip, and lipsticks. So the lipsticks that I picked up, here is the packaging. The lipsticks are made in Germany. First up, we have Fireberry, and this is what it looks like. So pretty. Next, we have Moroccan Spice. This is Parisian Red. Took a few swatches there. This is the red shade. Last is Soft Rose. It's like a pinky blush color. The lighter colors, I feel like, have less pigment. I also got a liquid lipstick. This is in the shade Foxy. And the liquid lipstick is made in the USA. So let's open this up. No scent. Honestly, it looks like the same applicator as the concealer. It might be. We got some pigment there. This color is really pretty. I like this color. See if it dries. Nothing bugs me more than a liquid lipstick from the drugstore that does not dry. I'm like, it's not a liquid lipstick then if it doesn't dry. The last two I have are glosses. These are lustrous, lustrous. I bought Heartbreaker and Ethereal. I'm gonna swatch Heartbreaker first. And they have the same applicator. No scent. Actually, these smell like kind of plasticky. They feel thick as well. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like Ethereal or not. I think it's like too washed out. I thought it was gonna be more clear. I like the first color better. So here are the glosses. So Heartbreaker's in the middle, and then this is Ethereal. This looks like a metallic eyeshadow. <laughs> I think I'm gonna use Moroccan Spice, this nude color. I wanna see how it looks on my lips. Glides on very smooth. It definitely looks more matte on the lips than I thought it was gonna look. On my hand, it looked super shiny. On the lips, it looks more satin. The liquid lip is still drying on my hand. It's still getting there. Last but not least, I have the Makeup Perfecting Setting Spray. This is a replenishing makeup spray that hydrates, preps, and sets skin for flawless makeup application. I want to smell it first. Let's see if it smells like anything. It smells like something familiar. It's almost like laundry mixed with something else, but not like... <coughs> oh God, my belt. <coughs> not like good laundry. I don't know. Okay, let me just set my face. Is, wait, is there alcohol in this? Where are the ingredients at? Oh my gosh, the ingredients are behind this little tab. I hate when they do that. You have to do the most to figure out what, what ingredients are in here. I got it. Okay, ingredients, water, alcohol. All right, there's alcohol, castor oil, fragrance, aloe, leaf juice, caffeine. So there is alcohol. On the daily, I would not use a setting spray that has alcohol in it because it is not good for my skin, but let's spray it on our face. <coughs> it's like, Super strong. What is that smell? <coughs> <coughs> this, no. <coughs> nope, uh-uh. It's still drying. I'm guessing it's gonna dry, but I don't know. <coughs> it's already been like five minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off. Oh my gosh, I forgot a product. You guys, we have one more product that I completely missed on my desk, and this is a highlighting stick. Champagne Kiss, and where where is she made? She is made in, made in Canada. All right, I'm gonna just swatch this on my hand for you guys. I can't believe I forgot. Oh, okay, we're fine. It's lumping up a lot on my hand. It's okay, it's just not like showing up how I would want it to show up. Let's round everything up. Honestly, the foundation I really do like. It's a little bit drying, like I feel like it's emphasizing some parts of my face, but not terribly. It's very much a natural finish, and I actually really like the foundation. I feel like a lot of these products looked better swatched or used with your fingers than with a brush. Like the powders are very powdery. I didn't hate the brushes. The translucent setting powder, I actually really liked the powder. The concealer and corrector I also liked. The sponge, girl. Why is it so big though? That's my only question for that. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If there are any products from here that you're gonna try or if you've tried any of the products, let me know down below. We can get a conversation going. Also, if you have any requests for new lines, whether it's skincare or makeup that you want me to review, do first impressions, please leave that down below as well. As always, thank you so much for watching and uh, going with me on this journey of trying all these products. Before you leave the video, don't forget to hit subscribe down below to join my A-team and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up for more. Love you guys so, so much and I'll see you in my next video.